Hi guys, Team RC 3D Prints, and today we are going to look at the front differential. Often gets overlooked compared to the rear one. The rear is obviously easier to get to. The front is delve is, is deep in the insides of the truck down there. So it's not always the easiest to get to. It doesn't take as much punishment as the rear of the one on the truck, but we're going to have it out, see what it's like. It's not as difficult as it sounds, but we will show you step by step how to do so it. So the first task is to remove the body shell. I'm sure by now you don't need us to give you a step by step guide to that, but it is just a case of removing the 12 screws on the body shell, the back, the front, these side ones here we don't actually use because we found it actually causes more damage to the body shell than it saves. And also you'll need to remove the front of the car. Now I've got a link to a video that we've done on how to do that. And here it is with the front of the car now removed, ready to work on the diff. Now this one has actually got the upgraded um, drive shaft or front uh, center drive shaft. It's actually metal. The standard one is actually a plastic sliding one, which uh, we'll show you a picture of. And this one is just a bit more heavy duty. It's just a bit stronger, really. You can see the steering assembly here. That's another video which we may come on to because I think this spring in here becomes weak and it, it doesn't uh, uh, help the steering of the truck. It just goes a little bit weak. And other than that, the front of this truck is pretty much standard. We have got some Vitavon um, alloy front lower wishbones which we might put on quite a straightforward process but we'll show a little video on those do a comparison on those but say so for this video we are going to use this to service the front transmission quite straightforward to get to as you can see this truck is pretty dusty and dirty and before I open this up and before I get any potentially more dirty I'm just going to clean this off so off camera I've just given that a clean with some compressed air and uh, paintbrush still reasonably dirty but it's got rid of the loose dirt, which I don't want to get into any of these casings when I open them up. So to, so to remove the differential, there's six screws, one there, one there, and you've got one at each corner of the actual casing there. So we'll just remove them, two and a half mil hex, remove those six bolts. And with those bolts removed, it should just be a case of removing the cover, like so. Try to drop the bolts everywhere, and that's reasonably clean. Not too much grease packed in here. You'll see some people pack this full of grease but most of the grease spins off the gear so you don't need to go overboard on the grease and here is our differential and the pinion gear with the front axle on it so if you've got these out of your truck what are you going to do well the first thing is it depends why you've took it to bits if you've had some problems with the truck and some graunching sounders no doubt you've probably worn more than likely this gear now, we'll have a quick inspection of this. There was no dodgy noises coming from the gearing on the front of this. Um, I can't see any evidence of any damage to any of the teeth. And there's no sign of any metal filings or anything on the inside of this case. So what I think we'll do on this one, we will just take this diff to bits, just to show you the components and to some items that we would check and potentially replace. Now, the first thing you'll notice on my hand next to my thumbs here is these marks, grooves, dents, whatever you want to call them. This is where the drive shaft sits in there. So that does need replacing. I haven't got any of these to hand, but it does need replacing. This wear will just get worse and worse because the, the drive shaft goes in there, it, it twists. If we show you, if you can see, the drive shaft goes in there like that. So when you're accelerating, you're getting that movement there. So that is just wear, and that will just wear more and more. Eventually, something will break, either the diff cup will break or the pin on the drive shaft will break. So we would replace those. Again, I haven't got a spare pair of them to hand, so we will take it to bits and show you how you would replace so them. So on our pinion gear, uh, doesn't seem to be any signs of wear on that. We'll just check to see if those bearings feel okay, and they feel okay. Now, obviously, this is not the standard drive assembly, but it, it, it attaches in the same way as the standard one. Now, I don't quite know why that shaft is sticking out that far. And there's a small amount of play. I don't know if you can see that. So we'll just see what happens when I tighten that up. Hmm. Still doesn't feel quite right. So we'll just take it to bits and see what's happened there. No, that's not right. It looks like something snapped. So in actual fact, oh yes, you can see that pin has snapped. 
So in actual fact, that was very soon going to be spinning freely and we wouldn't have had any front drive. So we've got a spare one of these pins so we can replace that easy enough. So here is our replacement pin. We will just put a small amount of thread lock on that. Always use blue thread lock. Don't use red because red you'll never get the thing undone. I've seen some comments from people that they've actually had red thread lock on their truck. Now I can't see that that's from factory build. I think that's when people have been working on them. If you put red on, you won't get the thing undone. You will just have to replace parts. So just wipe away any excess thread lock. And that appears to be so now turn our there. attention to the differential. Now I mentioned earlier that these were quite worn. I have actually now got a new pair of the drive cups. So we will replace them first of all. You've got to remove these anyway to get to the diff. Uh, this ring gear is the same as the rear one. So you only need to keep one, if you keep them spares, you only need to keep one uh, for the front or the rear. And certainly the rear does go quite regularly. But you've got a little 2 mil bolt in here, which takes the uh, drive cups off. Now, no doubt, I've already cleaned this out, but you'll have a lot of rubbish and dirt in there potentially. So you might not be able to get your driver into the head of the bolt. So you might need to just clean that out. But it should come off relatively easily. Once that's undone, that just pulls out like that. And we'll undo the other one. And that just comes off exactly the same. We can now remove the bearings. So remove the bearings. Again, a quick check, as I always do, any bearing that you get to, does it feel smooth? Yes, that feels fine. Something that I have seen some people mention is that you can use this rear diff in the back of the truck and obviously have a, have a differential in it. Well, you can't. You do need to buy the proper Traxxas conversion kit because this is the rear shaft I just put pulled the rear shaft out of one of the trucks as you can see that does not fit in there as you can see you've got a, a an axle in there which these then bolt onto so that does not fit so what we'll do now we will just slacken off and undo these four bolts which will then let us into the actual diff casing when you're taking a diff apart the chances are you're either doing this because you want to replace this gear or you're looking to tune your car and perhaps put a different weight oil in it. So if you are going to change the diff oil, the standard is 30k or 30,000. You can go heavier, which will mean the diff will be stiffer. It'll have less tendency to spin up uh, the inside wheel. Or if you go lighter, it will have more of a tendency to spin up the inside wheel. Now, this is the first time I've opened up this diff. And I can't see actually hardly any oil in that whatsoever. So it's a good job we've opened that up. Whether it ever had, had any, in, any in or not, I'm not sure. So we'll just remove these gears. So remove the gears so we can inspect them. Probably can't see too well on camera, but that looks very, very little wear on that. And again, these little uh, satellite gears, they look good too. So I'm not even going to actually clean any of this up. If this was covered in grease and everything, then I would give this a good degrease but as it's pretty much dry there's no uh, no need to do that so we've got these little uh, almost like a, a bearing which sits in that square of that bearing sits in the uh, grooves on the side of the bell housing of the diff and we then a little bit fiddly then just need to get them to sit in there like that and there is our other gear. Now I'm going to just fill this back up with 30 weight oil, 30,000. Now how much oil should you put in here? Well, there's no guidance in the Traxxas manual. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do it so it covers the cross pins, which have actually got inserted in there wrong. I don't know if you can see, there's a flat on there and it should be the other way around. In fact, that one's in the wrong way as well, so that's actually a good point. When you put these in, so they are rotating effectively on the same plane. Let's take that off so you can see. You've got a flat, so they need to go in like so. So those flats go together, so they're all rotating in the same plane. If you get them in wrong, like I just did, then you won't get the gearbox back together basically. So that goes in like so. You just need to line up those squares, which is a little fiddly. 
So we've lined all that up. Now another thing to inspect is this blue, I don't know if you can see, but it's actually a blue, it's a seal. It's actually the rubber seal on the diff. So you need to make sure that's not damaged, because if that's damaged, you will call, get a leak from your diff oil. And again, make sure there's no damaging to the housing. If this housing is distorted, then you will get a leak as well. Now, back to the oil. So we've now got those pins in correctly. You then need to work out how much oil you're going to put in. As I said, there's no real guidance in the Traxxas uh, manual as to how much to put in here. But from my experience, I'm going to put enough oil in here just to cover the cross pins. It gets a bit messy, this process, but we'll then put the ring gear back on and then we will fix up these screws. Now there's no need now to thread lock these because you're going into plastic. You only need to thread lock when you are going into a metal, when you're screwing into something that's metal because you then get a chance that it could come undone. Like with the rear diff, the rear diff ring gear screws into a metal part so you need to thread lock that, but the front you don't need to. So I've nipped them up nearly tight well, not quite, as you can see on that one. But what I make sure you do, what you need to make sure that you do, is that you do these up in a cross pattern so that you get this seated nice and evenly. So we then pop our bearings back on. Doesn't matter which way they go on. And then we will put our new drive cups on. And because we are putting them into the screw that goes into them is metal into metal, we will use a small amount of thread lock. They need to be free of grease because thread lock won't work with grease, so they have been degreased. We will then just put, well, oh, thread lock's gone everywhere. There we go. That's enough. Doesn't need to be too much. And then screw them into there. A good hand tight, I would say. You don't need to be cranking it on loads of turns and that is one diff redone and that does feel a lot smoother because obviously there was no oil in it before now it's just a case of putting it back in the car so we're back with our diff casing or the front end bulkhead depends how fastidious you are of your cleaning you could give this a much better clean than what i have but that'll do for me this is a this is a working truck shall we say so there's no no real issues so you can't get this diff in the wrong way if you put it in that way it just doesn't fit it goes in that way and then put in your pinion gear and shaft. Now those bearings, you see me just struggling a little bit, they actually need to just come slightly apart and then they seat into the moulding like so. Now you need to work out what grease you're going to put in here. Now. You don't need to pack this full of grease. When I've done one of these previous videos with the gears, someone said I didn't put enough grease in. But if you pack this all with grease, when it spins around, it all flings off anyway. So you just need a good amount just on the gears. I just put them on like that. I mean, certainly you don't want to put too little in, but you certainly don't want to keep packing it. You know, don't put globules of grease in. I mean, I certainly that's more than enough for, for my liking. And the type of grease I'm using, it's a good quality, high temperature uh, lithium grease, multi-purpose lithium grease. There's all sorts of greases on the market. You just need to use what works well for you. If you're regularly keeping an eye on these, it's not so much of an issue. You can, if you're worried about dirt and grease getting, sorry, dirt getting into these, you can run a small amount of grease around here to get a good seal. I'm not going to worry too much. It's more of a problem on the rear of the truck than the front. Um, and again, we tend to strip ours down relatively regularly anyway. So that's enough grease in there. Cap back on and then we'll just pop those four screws on. So we have those screws on. They're all in there nicely. Just check that it still moves nice and freely, which it does. And that is basically the diff now, all rebuilt and ready to go back in the car. If you refer back to our previous video, which we linked to, which shows you how to replace this all back into the car, and it gives you step-by-step -step guides on how to do that. So hopefully you have liked this video. If you have, then please do like, share, and subscribe, and we will have more videos and tutorials for you shortly. Thanks for watching.